Hey everybody, I'm Dan and this is User Spice 5. What in the world is User Spice? User Spice is a tool for rapidly developing applications written in PHP and the way I like to describe it is that if you take the 30 seconds to install User Spice, you are basically halfway done your project because we've taken the time to do all of the annoying things that you have to do every time you create a project. We deal with languages and logging in and logging out and password resets and user management and page security and database access and all that kind of stuff. So this is the default home page that obviously you would change for your own needs and you can see there's a language switcher here and you can change languages as you need to and then what we're going to do is we're going to log in with the default username and password which you'll want to change it's admin and password and you're immediately greeted with this dashboard that has some basic information about your server it tells you how to get some help and a little widget for your most active users and we'll get into widgets a little bit more in a moment but you can click here on settings in general and from there you can change some of the basic settings like your site name and your copyright message you can take the entire site offline and put it into maintenance mode you can force HTTPS you can set up your languages and things like that and there's all kinds of just really cool stuff that you can do very easily without having to do any coding you can set registration settings manage your menus and all that kind of stuff now one of the things i'm most excited about with user spice 5 is that it's a decent amount faster even though 4 wasn't slow at all and the download itself is about one-third the size of the old download and part of the reason for that is that basically we stripped out a lot of the code that not everybody uses and we've turned those things into plugins and add-ons and one of the easiest ways to get to those things is through our spice shaker you can get your own api key for free from user spice and then you can say let's say i want to add a few widgets so we'll add another widget to the dashboard and say that we want to add some quick access links and we'll add some logs that, that's good so bam bam they're installed we can come here, it's downloaded them from the Git repository, installed them, and now we have quick access to our users and pages. We have our latest logs and we can see what people have done on the site and all that stuff in just a couple of seconds. Uh, we can also come to Spice Shaker and maybe grab a new template. There's a few templates, but we're adding more and more all the time. And so you can, let's say we'll take this one called Simplex and we can install it. Bam, it's installed and come here to our tools and templates and now you'll see that we have two templates and just to show you what the other one looks like I'll open this in another page we have the clean black standard template or you can activate this and all of a sudden you have the simplex which is gray and red and just behaves differently than the other template but let's say that you don't like any of the templates which is pretty reasonable so one of the things you can do, and if, you'll, if you've used User Spice at all, you know that we are pretty flexible with what you do. So you can come into your templates folder, and let's say let's take this simplex one, and we're going to duplicate it, and we're going to call it Dan. So we've made a new template called Dan. I can click on it and go to the XML file, and I can just call it Dan, and I can update the date that I made it and all that kind of stuff. I'll save it. But then one of the things I can do is I can just go in there and begin to edit these files however I want. And I can edit my CSS, my JavaScript. I can have custom functions involved with my templates and all that kind of stuff. So you can basically do whatever you want. Let's say that I have my own bootstrap.css file from another project and I want my CSS to all match. So I can come in here and I can visit the assets folder and I'll see that I have a CSS folder and I can just overwrite the existing bootstrap.css I'll replace it and now I can close these two and then you'll see when I come over here to the admin panel and refresh this I have a new template called Dan in addition to the other two and I can choose to activate that one and then when I refresh this page you're going to get the new look and feel so in just a couple of seconds I was able to fork an existing user spice template and make my own and know that as user spice is updated my own template isn't going to get overwritten or anything like that so very cool one of the other fun things is that i can come back here to the dashboard 
and I could go to this thing called Spice Shaker and click on, let's say, plugins, and let's just look at some plugins here. We have plugins for adding comments to your pages, dealing with that GDPR, Mosquito, Stripe, all kinds of fun stuff. Language checker if you want to make your own languages, and it's super simple to install these. You can click, and then let's say we want to add this one, and we want to add this one, and you can just click them, and in a couple seconds you'll have them. And what what it does is it copies it over here, but it does not fully install them. So for security purposes, we want to make sure that you actually run this yourself, and so you can install it, and then you can activate it. And if it has something special, that like a user interface that you can run, then you actually can get to it right here by the add-ons. It adds a little link here so you can have quick access to that plugin. So speaking of plugins, we have the form builder already installed and I have a very basic form called sales. It just has, uh, there's a way to edit it and at the bottom you can preview it and you can see first name, last name, product, price. You could do some validation, all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna play with that a little bit later. Probably the best way to demonstrate this stuff is to actually get into the code. So I'm going to open the code editor back up and go to the users folder. And you'll see I have a thing called blank pages and there's this file called project root and I can duplicate this and let's just call it, uh, let's call it example.php, super creative. And then we're gonna bring it into the root. Now, when we look here at example.php, let's get all this garbage out of the way. We have an example.php, and I'm going to snap this to the right. And then we are going to log out, and we'll snap this to the left. And you can see that when I come here to, now I am logged out, so if I refresh the page, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be redirected here. But if I were to try to visit that example.php page I made, then you're going to see what's going to happen. I'm told that I must go into the database and click manage pages and obviously if I'm a front end user I can't do that so I can come in here and I can go to admin and password and then what we'll do is we'll come to pages and we'll see that this is in here and we can say that all right if you're a user or you're an admin you can visit this page we're going to make it private so that people can't visit it from the front. And then we're going to just give it something like a title for the browser. We're going to say this. Is, yeah, okay, that's already there. This is an example. Update. Great. So now, even if we uh, if we log in as a regular user, we can visit example.php. But if we log out, then we cannot visit example.php. We're redirected to the login page. So easy peasy. So you probably want to write some code and you can do that. You can write any kind of vanilla PHP or JavaScript that you want. You don't need to use any kind of special user spice classes, but they're available. So we'll come in here and just for the heck of it, we'll open up a set of PHP tags right in the middle and let's go ahead and log in as user. And then we're going to go, all right, so we're at our example.php. We were redirected there because that's where we tried to go last time. So we can do something really simple. We could say display form, and then that form is called sales. And now when we refresh the page, we should have our sales form. And then we want to process that form. We want to be able to put it in the database. So we'll just do this here to make it simple. We'll say if not empty post. So if something has been posted, then process form. And this takes care of all the sanitization and deals with the tokens and all that kind of stuff for security. And then let's just say for the heck of it, let's redirect the page when you're done submitting. So super simple. Uh, redirect, redirect to uh, example.php. Fantastic. So we can come in here and I can say Bob Ross bought a painting class for a thousand dollars from me and then submit that form I'm redirected great now I could also do something like display table sales because that's the name of the form and now when I refresh the page I'm going to get all of these different 
entries just automatically put in a table and I can say Jim Beam bought a distilling class and we'll say that's two thousand dollars we'll say class to keep it consistent and we submit the form and you'll see they're automatically popped in to this table so there's a lot of power in these functions and things but I want to get down to what the core of user spice is so we're going to let's duplicate this page and we'll call it sample another creative name sample.php and what we're going to do is we're going to control a we're going to delete everything here and we're just going to open up a set of php tags and voila now there's nothing stopping this from loading sample.php user spice knows it's there but cannot do anything with it because it's just a blank php file so in its very essence user spice is this one line of code right here and so when you have this one line of code all of a sudden you have the bulk of what user spice does and so we have a connection to the database we have a bunch of helper functions we have a bunch of classes that can sanitize data and stuff like that and so just to show you that what we're going to do is we're going to say db for database equals put a space there db get instance and then let's write a very simple query we will say uh, test equals db query select star from or the username username f name l name like this from users where id equals one and then we're just going to get the first one and then we will say dump which is a custom user spice function for var dumping with that's pre-formatted and so we're going to say dump test and now what you can see is that we have access to the database and we have access to all of the custom functions and helper files and things like that with this one line of code now in addition to that you may decide that you want to use the user spices look and feel and all of that kind of stuff so in that case you can come here and grab this line and this line will give us all of our templates and initiate our database connection and all that kind of stuff I can refresh this page and now I have the menu and there's another line a corresponding line for the footer but basically you have access to all of the jQuery and all of that kind of stuff that's included with the template and finally there's one more line that's going to trigger something we're going to grab this line and this is probably the reason why you want user spice because we take care of all the page security so what will happen is when this page is saved and I go to refresh it now all of a sudden user spice knows what this page is and that it has permission to control this page so we're going to log out and then we're going to visit the same actually well, let's log in as admin So we're logged in as admin and then we're going to try to visit that same sample.php page and you'll see that we're automatically redirected to this permissions thing and we can come in here and we can set our permissions we can say that only administrators can visit this page and we'll just say admins only like that for the page and now we can visit it but if we log out and try to visit it as user and I go to sample.php then I'm redirected to the home page so essentially these three lines of code on any PHP page give you the ability to access a bunch of functions control the look and feel of the site and secure who can visit this page and who can't with just three lines of code so just to take another look at the permissions because I want to give you a little bit more information about that we're gonna log back in as admin password and then I'm going to come here to the permission manager and one of the cool things is that you can make as many permission levels as you want so all right we've got manager we'll make one called manager and then we'll make one called friend and we'll make one called you you are special like that and then now when I come to my pages manager I have all the pages including that sample page and example page and I can say that anyone already anyone with admin access can view it but I can also say well managers friends and people who are special 
are allowed to visit that page also. And so this is not any kind of hierarchy. A user can have as many of these permissions as you want them to, and any page can have any combination of these permissions that you want. So you have total flexibility as to how you manage your users and your permissions. I could really spend the next couple of hours talking about all the different features of user spice. We could look at user management and cloaking and the API builder and cron jobs and all the different things that user spice can do. But what I really want you to take away from this video is that this project is designed to make your life easier. And it's maintained by a group of people that you can find over here on discord who just love to help people get started. And so if you have any problems, if you have any questions, either in the comments on this video or over there on Discord, we'd love to help. We'd love to get you started. This is the one of the most versatile software packages I've ever used. I've used it for escape rooms and duck hunt walls, and it gets used in big companies and government projects and all kinds of stuff on literally every single nation on the face of the earth somebody uses user spice for something and that's just amazing to me and i hope that you enjoy it